Brought to you by PrayLatin.com, makers of prayer cards featuring complete English phonetic renderings of Latin pronunciations. Today is the feast of Our Lady of Fatima. For years we've gotten reports out of Rome that Francis refuses to speak about the Fatima message in any meaningful way. World leaders have asked him about the message of Our Lady of Fatima, and he has reportedly said on different occasions that we, meaning Rome, doesn't talk about Fatima anymore. Rome acknowledges the feast day and makes simple observances that are typically rather trite on this feast day when it comes to the messages they send out, as I'm sure you'll see if you watch Francis' address or Mass homily for today. But as a broad matter of Vatican policy, Rome does not acknowledge the message of Fatima anymore. They want to move on from Our Lady's messages in 1917, and for a simple reason. Modernist Rome hates the Fatima message. They've made that abundantly clear in a story that came out of Rome that almost no one saw a few days ago. So it is my sad duty to bring it to you today because Rome just sent a message to the faithful that could have some serious implications for the faith. They don't really even believe in the events at Fatima were real because Our Lady did things that a mother wouldn't do, according to them. For me, belief in the events at Fatima are one of those litmus tests for a Catholic. And while certainly it's not a matter matter that you have to believe it since it's private revelation, the events at Fatima, Portugal, in October 1917 were witnessed by tens of thousands of people, many of whom were hostile witnesses. Many people came to Fatima hoping to see believing Catholics embarrassed by the lack of public miracles being performed that we were told were going to happen on that faithful day in October. Yet it is a known fact that the miracle of the sun did happen that day, as attested to by even media outlets who are openly hostile to the church. Their reporters confessed to seeing the miracle of the sun happen and saw it happen in real time. The sun really did dance across the sky in defiance of its nature that day. It really did look as if it was going to strike the earth when it appeared to dive towards the people in attendance. There's no scientific explanation for the events that happened that day. The people really were dried from the rain by the sun's movement. And yet, for whatever reason, many modern Catholics don't take the simple message all that seriously. The church hasn't really taken the message seriously since the real message of Fatima was never released by the church and no... No, 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 that message released in the last years of John Paul II's pontificate were almost certainly not the real message of Fatima because it does not line up in the slightest with things that were hinted by even John Paul II about what it contained or about what people who claim to have read it have said. Rome has hated this critical message about a warning of the state of souls of the people for many decades, attempting to bury Fatima or turn it into something akin to a political message. We now have confirmation that they don't even necessarily believe that it or most of these serious Marian apparitions are real, which is some serious implications for rather basic things like the, I don't know, the authority of the magisterium to declare someone a saint as an infallible act. Headline from Alpha and Omega dot ES, Stefano Chechen. The, appar- the apparitions are examined with a magnifying glass. The president of the Pontifical Marian Academy stresses the importance of verification in the face of the increase in deception. Yes, there is a Pontifical Marian Academy, founded in the late 1940s. It's an official institute for the Roman Curia and dedicated to studying the reality of Marian apparitions, or lack thereof. Given the rising number of alleged apparitions of the Blessed Virgin since the 19th century, and yes, including attempts at fraud with them, it's an essential office in Rome, even if its work is done pretty quietly most of the time. Now, the head of the Pontifical Academy in question thinks the events at Fatima, Portugal, were real. And he doesn't quite say it explicitly, but you'll see what I mean. Those events led to the canonization of the Fatima children, Jacinta and Francisco, which, of course, at the very least, if you deny the reality of the Fatima message, undercuts the authority of the magisterium of the church to canonize these children. The president of the Pontifical Marian Academy doesn't appear to believe in any of the apparitions of Our Lady because they come bearing messages warning of an impending chastisement from God and often come bear with them illness and death. The pres- As the priest says, this means the apparitions of Our Lady in the modern world are probably false. Now think about that in terms of La Salette, Akita, the apparition mistakenly called Our Lady of Good Success, and I say mistakenly because I have numerous videos on why that's not her name, as well as, of course, Fatima. From the article, quote, The apparitions are examined with a magnifying glass in an interdisciplinary way from a scientific perspective. The commission is made up of doctors, lawyers, psychologists. It is necessary to analyze, for example, the morality of the visionaries, their physical and mental state, or whether there are conditioning factors or external interests. A decision then comes from it. Each member of the commission issues a written judgment, 
gives his opinion, his positive or negative opinion. This material is given to the bishop for him to decide. The Holy See issues clear rules on this in 1978. Therefore, there is a protocol in place. But there are warning signs. Does a mother want to punish her children by sending them illness, death? No way. So the apparitions that speak of God's punishments are absolutely false. End quote. Think about that for a second. You know, Gloria TV made it sound like also that this is a denial of the Gospels. I'll let you decide if that's true or not. But that was a direct attack on the message of Fatima. Famously, the two canonized Fatima children fell seriously ill almost immediately after the events of Fatima, Portugal, and passed away. And Our Lady even told the children that this would happen to them. They were shown eternal perdition and the fires that awaited poor sinners in an act meant to convey, using basic human fear of the reality of the consequences of sin, what does await poor unrepentant sinners. That, to the modern mind, doesn't sound too motherly. Perhaps one of the consequences of the softness of our age is apostasy due to basic misunderstandings about the reality of sin and its consequences, and the fact that all of us are too far too concerned about the material. That's why it doesn't sound too motherly to the modernist. The purpose of the Pontifical Marian Academy, by the way, is for the Vatican to study apparitions because Rome really doesn't believe the local ordinary is equipped or rational enough to do it. The law of the church actually says that the local ordinary is the final authority on determining if a Marian apparition is worthy of belief or if the lady should stay away. And Rome has historically certainly helped the local ordinary in this process. But those decisions are why I don't cover certain very popular modern apparitions. The local ordinary has said in various cases that fraud is being committed or that whatever the event is, it isn't our lady that is appearing to an alleged seer and that the laity should stay away, and all clergy involved should cease and desist. And this has happened numerous times, including two apparitions that some of you watching this are probably fond of. Rome, though, doesn't trust the local ordinary on these issues anymore, and for a variety of reasons, many of them legitimate. But the priest in this interview, with this Spanish-language outlet, makes clear that the Vatican doesn't actually trust the consistent messages of previously approved Marian apparitions that remind us that heaven and hell are real, that we must do penance, that we are, broadly speaking, a wicked generation heading for chastisement, complete with the symptoms of our wickedness made clear to us. The messages of Our Lady are very consistent, and I've been promising for a couple of years now a synthesis of these messages of Our Lady from various apparitions. But they come with messages like evil priests, heresy in the church, lukewarmness among the faithful, usually communicated in very explicit ways that make it clear that we are in a generation now, or if not now, very soon, and should take heed. Apparently, Rome doesn't believe in those messages anymore. Maybe the messages hit too close to home for them. You know, the last known authentic message of Sister Lucia was given to Father Fuentes in 1957. In that message, she warns of how the message of Fatima is not believed by the church, and that in 1960 it would become clear. Whether that year was important because of the coming Second Vatican Council or because of the reality of increased impurity in the world due to social revolutions and the kind or geopolitical affairs is something debated endlessly by people. But the message is clearly focused on apostasy in the church as a consequence of sin. Here are Sister Lucia's words in 1957 given to Father Fuentes about the message of Fatima. This is long, but it's definitely worth your time. Quote, Father, the Blessed Virgin is very sad because nobody pays attention to her message, neither the good nor the bad. The good ones because they follow her path of goodness, but ignore the message. The wicked because not seeing the punishment of God, currently upon them, because of their sins. They also continue their path of evil, without paying attention to this message. But believe me, Father, God is going to punish the world, and he is going to punish it in a tremendous way. Heaven's punishment is imminent. What is missing, Father, for 1960, and what will happen then? It will be a very sad thing for everyone, and not a happy thing, if before the world does not do prayer and penance. I cannot go into more detail, since it is still a secret, that by the will of the Blessed Virgin, only the Holy Father and the Bishop of Fatima could know about it. Father the Devil is waging a decisive battle against the Virgin, and since he knows what offends God the most, and what in less time will win him the greatest number of souls, he is trying to win the souls consecrated to God, since in this way he also leaves the field of souls forsaken, and the devil more easily seizes them. Tell them also, Father, that my cousins Francisco and Jacinta sacrificed themselves because they always saw the Blessed Virgin very sad in all her apparitions. She never smiled with us, and that sadness and anguish that we noticed in the Blessed Virgin because of the offenses against God and the punishments that threaten sinners, reached our souls. And we 
did not know what to devise in order in, in, to find in our childish imagination means to make prayers and sacrifice. The second thing that sanctified the children was the vision of hell. For this reason, Father, it is not my mission to indicate to the world the material punishments that will certainly come on earth if the world does not first do prayer and penance. No, my mission is to point out to everyone the imminent danger we are in lo of losing our souls forever if we continue clinging to sin. Father, Sister Lucia told me, let us not wait for a call to penance to come from Rome, from the Holy Father, for the whole world, nor do we expect it to come from the bishops, each one in his diocese, not even from the religious congregations. No, our Lord has already used these means many times, and the world has paid no attention to him. Therefore, now that each one of us begins his spiritual reform by himself, that he has to save not only his own soul, but also save all the souls that God has placed on his path. Father, the Blessed Virgin did not tell me that we are in the last days of the world, but she gave me proof for three reasons. The first, because she told me that the devil waging a decisive battle with the Virgin in a decisive battle is a final battle where it will be known which party is victorious, which party is defeated. So now either we are of God or we are of the devil. There is no middle ground. The second because they told me to my cousins and me that the two were the last remedies that God gave to the world, the Holy Rosary and the devotion to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. And since they are the last remedies, it means that they are the last, that there will be no others. And third, because always in the plains of divine providence, when God is going to punish the world, he first exhausts all other means. And when he has seen that the world has paid no attention to any of them, then, as if to say in our imperfect way of speaking, he presents us with a certain fear, the last means of salvation, his most holy mother. If we despise and reject this last means, we will no longer have forgiveness from heaven because we have committed a sin, which in the gospel is usually called a sin against the Holy Spirit, which consists in openly rejecting with all knowledge and will the salvation that is presented in the hands and also because our Lord is a very good son, and he does not allow us to offend and despise his blessed mother, having as clear testimony the history of several centuries of the church, that with terrible examples shows us how our Lord has always come out in defense of the honor of his blessed mother. End quote. What is more likely? That an alleged Marian apparition should be dismissed because it comes with warnings of sin and death, and associated illness as a manifestation of a chastisement, or that the faithful have largely lost their faith and just go through emotions every day, living lines of sin and debauchery and embracing the wickedness of the world in every meaningful way. You know, for some reason, Rome shies away from the message, now more than ever, in a time when we're told to dialogue with and accompany those who live lives wrapped up in sins that cry out to heaven for justice, in a time when every excuse is made for unexcusable sins, and in a time when there are very real signs that much of the hierarchy has lost the faith, we are now told indirectly that many of the most important Marian apparitions, which all bear, basically bear, bear the same message anyway, are probably false. It's reprehensible. And it's really weird, too, because there are things Francis talks about all the time that fit the Fatima message. Warnings about materialism and that sort of thing. I don't know. But what do you think about this story? Should Rome be held accountable for it? Are you surprised that this priest made an offhanded statement that undermines the message and reality of Fatima? Have you heard those words of Sister Lucia before? Let me know in the comments, please. Like and subscribe if you haven't. It does help. Sharing this on social media helps a lot, too. As always, pray for the church. I'm Anthony Stein. Ave Maria.